I'm going on an adventure this spring and it's actually going to happen right in my own house. I've decided I want to plant a garden with my kids this summer and I've got Jesse here to help me get started with seeds right in our own house, which I like because I actually live in a cold climate. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of sick of cold, we're kind of sick of winter. So yeah. to start growing something right now in early spring with the kids is going to be a lot of fun. So I know nothing about this. Can you help me get started? I think so. Okay. So you're going to want to start simple. So we're going to keep yes. it simple. Yes. So <laughs> kind of the basic things to know, the reason we're going to start seeds indoors is to get a jump on those transplants. So you're going to start things indoors that need warmer weather. So there are some things that you can direct sow in the garden. So these are things like beets, carrots, radishes, a lot of like the, root, things, the root, root vegetables, vegetables mm -hmm. um, peas, things that can tolerate cooler temperatures. We're going to just direct so right in the garden. So let's just not mess around with starting okay. those indoors, okay? So some of the warmer weather crops like tomatoes, peppers, basil, um, squash, and melons, we're gonna start those indoors so that our transplants are nice and beefy once the last frost happens and then we can put them outdoors. That makes a lot of sense. Kind of the advantage to starting your own seeds is that you get to pick and choose the varieties that you really like or maybe you want to try something new and unique you know maybe an heirloom variety or something that you can't find at your local garden store because they're going to have you know their transplants available to buy that actually makes a lot of sense so garden centers start their own seeds and uh -huh. i can buy a certain amount of things but if i go and just buy seeds it's it's the rack is huge, so yeah. I can choose whatever I want. Exactly. Okay. With that in mind, you know, you want to look for some specialty type things, things that you can't buy already grown. So in your area, you need to look up your la the last average frost date. In our area, it's about mid-May. About awesome. the time of my birthday. <laughs> yes. Okay? That's how I remember I it. I love having a frost in May, don't you? Isn't it great? Yeah. Well, okay. It's <laughs> average. So sometimes it's earlier, sometimes it's later. So we're going to go with our average last frost. Okay. And then we're going to back it up the number of weeks before the average last frost and each different type of plant needs to be seeded so many weeks before that last frost if you want to start them indoors. So will it say that to me on the seed package? Like Just, so yes. many weeks from last frost? Yes. It'll yes. say that on the seed packet. However, the university extension services are really good too. They have charts, et cetera, et cetera. So basically you, the World Wide Web is, is our Google friend. Google machine this. Yes. can help you. Okay. All right. So I made you this seed starting worksheet. Okay. Okay. So what you're going to do is you write your last average frost date up on the top. Here's kind of a list of what we want to grow. This is you sow this many weeks before the last frost date and then you do the math from May 15th going backwards. So tomatoes, you need to start six weeks before the last average frost I indoors. I actually hadn't thought about this. I mean, I just wanted to start gardening with my kids, but this, my son Chandler would be all over this yeah. action. He would actually fill this out and tell us exactly what we needed to do. So beyond the whole growing aspect, there's just so much about the research and yeah. the sort of backing up the math and figuring out what to do. It's amazing. Yeah. So you're flipping through your calendar. Maybe that'd be something fun to do after Christmas, yes. you know, when you're kind of winding down, let's plan our garden. So we got the calendar. What 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 is very exciting to me also is all of these different containers you have repurposed from your own home to actually start do the seed starting. So I know we can of course buy these pots that mm -hmm. biodegrade in the ground yep. once you plant them. But what you have done is like upcycled all of these containers I to know. grow things I've indoors. Been digging in my recycling. That's yeah. amazing. I love it. So and it looks I am all about kind of aesthetics. So this That's actually cute, it yeah. looks so cute too. Yeah, I love fine. the way this is. All right. So let me get, get, give me just the basics like what kind of soil am I putting in here and sure. how am I starting something? So what we're going to need to concentrate on is our soil. So you're going to want to use a lighter mix than potting soil. So it's going to be called a germination mix or seed starting mix. Okay. Buy this at your local garden store. Um, and this is just your basic peat, perlite. It's nice and light okay. so that the seeds have good drainage, good aeration. Okay. So what you're going to want to do, you know, fill Pre-fill whatever containers you want to use and then I wetted everything down. What I love about this is I can see that the instructions are just basically on yep. the back because if I can read instructions then I, I I know what to do. I mean that's how I learned to sew, that's how I learned to knit, that's that's yep. how I learned everything. Yeah, the seed so, packet is like the gardener's bible so you just read the seed packet. Perfect. Are there any 
secret tips or insider tips you have for me for growing or starting seeds? Well, um, I guess they're not really secret, but I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a good inside track would be maybe plant a few extra in case they die. Or, you know, if I'm starting tomatoes, I might put three seeds in one hole so that if two don't come up, you still get one. And then you just can thin them out and you have, you know, one sturdy plant when it's time to go. And you also need to think about here is um, humidity. So I think we should actually do this as a demo here. Okay. So these are lettuce containers and they're kind of like a little greenhouse. So what we did is we poked holes in the bottom because you're going to need um, drainage again, somewhere for where the water to go because you don't want a swampy mess. Yes. So you're going to need drainage and um, then we save the lid because that's going to kind of be our greenhouse. Make the humidity. Make the yes. humidity stay in while the seeds are germinating. Once they've sprouted, you see green stuff on the top, then you don't need the humidity anymore, okay? So this is actually really interesting to me. Like, Where is this applicable? Which kinds of seeds would I plant in here? You could really do anything. I mean, this is basically a uh, open canvas, but I would you know, plant all of the same thing. I so I'm making my own greenhouse with yeah. a lettuce container. Yeah, so if you wanted to, you could maybe do like six tomatoes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then as they sprout up, they get nice and sturdy, the roots go down to the bottom, then you could split them apart and transplant them into, you know, a larger container for it to grow up. Until I can transplant them outside. Right, so okay. that is a little bit of a process, but I thought since it's a lettuce container, we might just plant lettuce in it. This is really fantastic, and this is exciting for kids I think I mean honestly to see to cover it and then see the green start to come up and the whole process of it. I love it I yeah. love this idea and then moving outside this is like blowing up Pinterest right now I okay. gotta tell you <laughs> the so like using old milk jugs this is um, and like an old cleaner jug I wash it really good so you don't want anything left in there but you can actually start your seeds right in here yes. shut it tape it shut take the lid off and you can just put it outside on your in the snow in the snow. So it makes its own little greenhouse. So therefore you're not messing around inside with, you know, lighting your seeds, bottom, That's amazing. heat, all That's that amazing. stuff. So we could put our tomatoes maybe out on the deck in March. And you have your own little greenhouse there. And then when it's time to transplant them, they're already hardened off because they've been out in the elements. Yes. Um, and they're ready to go. This has been so informational and actually really inspiring. I cannot wait to get started. Thank you so much, Jesse. To learn more about the gardening tips we've talked about today, visit our website, 